Hey guys and welcome to another quick Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to take this raw photo that came off the camera just like you see it here and we're going to finish it to make it look the way it looks here. This is done with some very simple Photoshop adjustments and that's what we're going to do today. And if you're using this photograph, fantastic, you can follow along. The adjustments that I make are to my taste. You may find that you want it to look a little bit different, which is fine. You can make whatever adjustments you like. I'm just going to show you how I got from here to the finished photograph. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to crop this image. So over here on your very far left side, you've got your list of tools, okay? This is your toolbar. And sometimes if you're using an older version of Photoshop, your crop tool will be up in here somewhere. But if it's not, that's okay. Go over here to your little dots, hold down control and left click, and then this sort of sub menu will open. And here you'll find it right up toward the top. So just hit the crop tool and then you'll see that it kind of outlines and you've got these little things on the corners. And this is where you grab your edges and move them around accordingly. So I feel like this whole little section right here, there's not much really happening there in comparison to the rest of the photograph. And the bottle is hugging this corner and I want this glass to do the same kind of thing. So you simply grab the edge by left click and holding it down and then you just slide your finger across your pad or you can use your mouse and you just make the adjustment as you want to. So now I've gotten rid of all of this and I'm going to bring this bottom edge up a little bit too and I'm going to just shave off a little bit of this mug shot. I only want this tin to be peeking in just for the color balance and in a composition like this you kind of want to cut these things off right so we don't have the full bottle we're missing part of the gun missing part of the book and the glass and so on it creates a sense that we're looking at a small little thumbnail of a much larger composition and that's part of the allure of flat -wing. so we have our adjustments so we simply hit enter or return and then it just recrops our photo for us once again this is not complicated and there might even be more sophisticated ways to achieve the things that we're about to do but I'm kind of lazy so this is how we're going to approach it the first thing I want to do it looks a little bit dark to me so I'm going to bring up the brightness so let's go up to image and we'll go over to adjustments brightness and contrast and we're going to make adjustments to both of these so you can grab these sliders and bring your brightness up or down it's completely up to you and you can kind of get it where you want it to be sometimes it can get a little bit difficult to be precise if you have a specific place in mind and I do actually I'm going to bring it up plus 32 so you can just type that into this box and it'll automatically bring the slider to where you Telling. I'm also going to bring the contrast down and the contrast I'm going to bring down to minus 30. Again, if it's your image or you're editing this image, your numbers might be different and that's okay too. I'm also going to play with the color balance. So we're going to go over to image, again to adjustments, and then we're going to go down to uh, color balance, which is right here. Each one of these boxes is in conjunction with each one of these uh, color elements. So the first box is cyan, the second box is magenta, and of course the third box is yellow. So we're going to make adjustments, and I'm going to play with the cyan, and I'm going to bring it up to about plus 20, 22, somewhere around there. And as you can see, that changes sort of the reds a little bit. Let's just go back again to see what it looked like at zero, and then at 22, you can see that there's a little more red in there. I'm also going to bring some of the blues up a little bit, and I'm going to do that with the yellows. I'm going to bring down the yellows, which will in turn turn the blues up a little, and I'm going to add it to about 21. And as you can see, you get a little bit of a blue tinge to it as well. So I don't want to do anything with the magentas, because I don't want it to become sort of purple, and I don't want it to bring in the greens, so I'm just going to leave the magentas at zero and then I'm just going to click OK. I am also going to bring specifically the reds up a little bit. I want these reds to really kind of stand out. We can do that by actually selecting just the red values in this composition, and it'll only affect the reds. Now, it'll obviously grab the red in the book and the dice and this little tin down here, but it's also going to grab the reds in the whiskey and things like that. This, by the way, is not whiskey. It's actually just Coca-Cola. It's been watered down a little bit. So we're going to go to image, we'll go to adjustments, and we will go to selective color, which is about two thirds of the way down. Your reds will pop up, and then you can grab the yellows, the greens, and cyans, and so on. Uh, but we're going to be concerned with the reds and then all the way down to the blacks. So let's look at the reds first. Again, you can bring the reds up, you can bring them down, you can do whatever you want. 
right? And again, I really want these reds to pop. So this just takes a little bit of playing with the settings and, and sort of getting the tonal values that you want for your composition. As you can see, it's grabbing the reds in some of the other areas as well, not just the books and the dice and so on. And the other thing I like to do is the blacks. Remember earlier we brought some of that blue into our composition palette? And I like that. I like that sort of bluish black kind of tone. So when you adjust the black levels in your image, it kind of makes the blacks a little richer, but it also brings these other color elements in. You don't want to overdo it. But I do like the way it looks. So you can see, you can especially see down here, it's made the darks really, really rich, but it's also brought a little bit of the color values forward as well. This looks good to me. If you're doing your own edit, it might look a little bit different because you might have made different adjustments here or in those other adjustments, and that's okay too. Uh, just click OK. And now we're almost finished. The last thing I want to do, I want to add a vignette. A vignette is that little sort of fuzzy frame that you see kind of around the edges of a composition. So for that, we go up to Filter, Lens Correction, and this will pop up. You'll see all this kind of stuff. We're gonna go over to Custom, and way down here, halfway down is Vignette. And if you crank it all the way over you're gonna get that dark kind of haze around those edges if you crank it all the way to the lighten you're gonna get the brightness which I don't want of course I like it uh, just like that as far down minus 100 you can also change the midpoint if you bring that also down to zero obviously it's just the, almost the center and everything else is darkened out and again if you go all the way up there's practically nothing I'm just going to keep it right here at 50 because that's the look that I like and then click OK and here we now have our final photograph. Now that we're finished, we are just going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to call this Flatlay Finished 15. You can save it as a PSD, which means it'll save in this Photoshop document file, and you can go back and make other adjustments later. But I also suggest saving it as a JPEG, because if you want to post it anywhere, online or on your websites or whatever, you'll have to have a JPEG. I always keep it to the large file, click OK, and it's done. So that's it. Very quick adjustments. Again, I'm sure that there are more sophisticated ways to achieve this, but it's effective. To me, it's exactly what I want, and the whole process took less than 10 minutes. So good luck, have fun, and play with those other tools. You can't do anything in Photoshop that you can't undo if you don't like it. Thanks for watching.